uh, first of all, we try to do prayer for the God. Or uh, just try to keep your eyes closed. Om Vishwani Deva Savitar Duritani Parasuva Yad Patram Tanna Asuva Om Shanti Shanti But I have come in this program by the invitation of Neha Ben. I don't think I am very, very clever or anything like that. I'm not a doctor or I am not uh, something special things or anything. But I like to share my experience to you as well. And uh, you will know some of the knowledge of Vedas as well. Vedas is our Sanskriti. Vedas is our Sanatan Dharma. So, Sometimes you don't know, sometimes you know wrong way. So you must know the right meaning of our Sanatan Vedic Dharma. That's the main thing. But we are not discussing much about these things now. Now is the, I wanted to make you understand what is menopause. You all know better than me. I am, I may be the worst in knowing menopause, but I know my own experience that how my menopause goes just without any trouble. So I will experience, I will give you my experience. The one thing is that to get rid of all our sorrows, all our worries at the time of this menopause time. We shouldn't worry about anything. We shouldn't have stress about anything. But because we are living in uh, with our family, other family members, so we can't decide ourselves how to live. Okay? So we have to considering in mind all these things still we must be patient. We must know the what is the attitude of others. And if we don't like it, we just forget. We don't have to tell them too much about these things that uh, whatever are you talking loudly and things like that, I don't like it. Don't tell. I never told my husband about these things. No. <laughs> The main thing of this program is that why is it necessary to live in ashram in our culture? Ashram is one of the part of our culture. So people nowadays don't know what is ashram is even. People don't know even what is our real culture. So that is the sad thing of us that we don't know all these things. So, ashram, this is the system of our culture made by our Rushis, Rushi Munis, who told us about Vedas as well. So, <laughs> so ashram, I will tell one by one things about what are the several reasons for coming in the ashram when we are after our menopause time. Sometimes our starts, so many our things started after menopause as well. So I will tell you one by one why we, we should adopt this system. For this system, <laughs> because ashram is away from the town, city where we live. It is our system at that time. And it is, now it is started in India this time as well, where I'm living. It's away from the city. And there is no pollution and pure, I mean, pure hoapani, no, no atmosphere impurity or anything like that. Pure sattvic food, sattvic food we all knows. 
because we are used to not to eat sattvic food sometimes nowadays as youngster like sattvic don't like sattvic food they like tasty food tasty and with uh, too much mirchi and things like that so in ashram we can get pure sattvic food and can keep ourselves in that way we can keep ourselves healthy <laughs> and the second thing benefit is the good good benefit at home our children means our uh, sons and daughter in law and the, and other if there is a, if there are other persons as well can get independence if we go away in ashram mind well we both can go husband and wife it's not only wife can help men opposed so she has to go husband can follow her as well if he likes so we can get, get an independence down there and sometimes our children come and visit us and they ask us question asked us about our experience from the life so this is all done with dignity so we get good now the third thing is those who live in ashram can get opportunity to learn to learn our culture to learn our vedas to learn our shastras shastras means ved upanishad and we have got a to six shastras darshan shastras six darshan shastras and six only shastras so to get this 12 books which one cannot get time to learn at home or with children if you want to learn and if you can't get time in family life you got plenty of time down there and you can learn these things for as ashram at ashram we have certain routine that means waking up early in the morning and then after waking up we can do asanas pranayam meditation with our own face we can you can do puja as well by your own will but all this we do asanas pranayam meditation is the regular things and by keeping healthy we can live long without worries of any sansaric duties we haven't we haven't got duties down there and anyway after that age after menopause age our children must have grown up so we don't have other duties with that so we are free to do anything we wanted that that, that is good things for us the sixth is living there we can get more knowledge of our vedic sanatan dharma so we can fulfill our desires and our aim of life because sometimes we don't know aim of our life even so if you come down there then you can know the our aim of life what is our aim of life we can get rid of rag dvesh moh what whatever is in the sansar we can get rid of everything and we can get peace for our minds down there so there is no worries and peace and we can live peacefully with sattvic food so it's good for our life the most best i mean least reason is that we have not to live with false attitude that's the good reason for going in ashram we don't have to lie down there in sansar when we are in family life sometimes children ask us our sons ask us how are you and what we say oh i am all right even though we feel lots of pain here and there and we lie oh i am all right so we don't have to lie down there 
we can't express our view to sons and daughters-in-laws, frankly. Sometimes they ask us how, and we I have told you this thing. We have to say, I'm all right. We are not independent as a matter of fact in our family. If you come down there, we are independent as well. <laughs> and the one thing I have forgotten about this thing, we get pleasure, satisfaction, and happiness. That means peace which we can't get in this sansar at home. We can't go this thing. That is why menopause is the right age to come or to go to ashram and live there. We want to change our lifestyle, which we need in this period. Sometimes we think, that we, oh, we can live forever, whatever we are living with. That is not true. We have to change. We have to change our idea as well. We have to change so many things in our life. And if, if we are not ready, then we get stressed. And that is bad for our health as well. So you, you, you must accept all the changes in life. That means after 50, this life, I mean, menopause time is after 50 years of age, or one can go in the ashram after 60 years as well. Until 65 is the least, latest time, if you wanted to join in ashram. Because from that time, your body is still healthy. And what God has arranged for us is why we have got menopause. Because at that age, after middle age nearly, our body started deteriorating. So God has made us one thing good for us to get menopause. You have no worries about these things every month to look after this thing and that thing and that thing. Wherever we go, we have to carry all the things with us and things and that. So no worries. So God has freed us in one way. The other way. <laughs> Why God, I mean Ishwar, has given us this life? We have to think about this at this age. Because before that, we can't have time for thinking even. But after this age, we get time to think. We can make our life successful and can prepare for next life as well. That is the fact. Because we all know the fact. We, we, because we, are, we have come once, we have to go as well. Nothing is eternal in the world we see. Nothing. Whatever is made, must be destroyed. That is the rule of God, rule of Ishwar. We can't blame him because he is more clever than us why he has done these things. <laughs> so in this life, if we wanted to fulfill our aim, aim of life, we must change. That is why. I'll tell my own experience. That is why as soon as I got opportunity, I took it. I like to have benefits, lots of benefits I have got so far in this ashram life. I always thank God, Parmeshwar, for giving me this opportunity. Parmeshwar has not given me this opportunity just for nothing. Nothing is for nothing. God is always give us something good and a reason behind it as well. It was my prathna. I was praying every day for this, giving this life. I had to work hard for it. 
I have come to know all the real meanings of our lives down here in ashram. So I am not very intelligent like you, like you people. But throughout my life, I longed for this and God has granted me for studying. Even I'm not like you, intelligent like you. For studying, I can't remember each and every things I have to learn down there. I ought to remember, but by continuous repetition, by continuous repetition only, I have got it. Got success. I don't want to praise for myself. I'm not praising myself. But I can say that we can do it if we have determination of knowing our Shastras by going on this path, on this ashram, I mean ashram, our culture path. At present, I'm not boasting, at present, I have about 250 sutras by heart with slok, some sloks as well and mantras from the Vedas as well by heart. If you have time then I can make listen for you but we won't go to that time, that time at, the pro, at present. But those who are coming in my class on Tuesday they know this thing. Now, thinking of my own menopause period, I had never taken any tablets. As nowadays, the doctor prescribes you for your special treatment and for your special period and for your special hormones and things like that. I had never taken any of these tablets or anything. My monthly period starts as naturally and end Natural, ended naturally as well, without any pain during and throughout my life. As it started, it is gone. Maybe I had no time to think of other things because I was busy all the time in the sansa. I got four sons to bring them up and feed them up is a big job. Now, if you got one or two, you get tired. But it wasn't like that at that time. I always like to read about Vedas and other, other religious religion books as well, which describe about Ishwar, Paramatma. I wanted to know Ishwar's true nature. And we can get lots of benefits if we know the true meaning of God. From Ishwar, if we know him in his pure self. I cannot say that I have sakshatkar, good realization, some people say. It's not like that. But I can say that Ishwar has always helped me in my critical times in my life. And I was always happy to be with him all the time. At present, I can say that those who have enough money to live in ashram, they, they are all welcome. Why I said enough money? Because sometimes we have got house down here in which we are paying all, the, all our uh, bills and things, and we have to be there to get our expenses as well. So that is why I said, if you got enough money. I had not enough money even when I went in the ashram. Not enough. Then I decided what to do. I sold my house. I sold my house because I was, I was so much interested in the ashram. After going and see the activities and everything, for two years I just gone and see the activities only. After few uh, in few years, I came to know so many things. Then I settled down there. 
<laughs> because I sold my house, then I buy this, my flat small. Then I decided to stay up more down there. About six months here and six months there. So I can learn a little bit. And I can say this is the best life for me. And if you come, it is best for you as well. We can change our thoughts. Sometimes you, you think you don't want to know about our culture and things. Let it go as it is. It will go. Time fly away. Time won't wait for anybody else. But we can get regret in our later life if we have not fulfilled our aim of the life. So we must fulfill our aim of life. What is the aim of life? We don't know sometimes. <laughs> this is necessary for our for this life if we can come to ashram and make our life successful i mean which the aim of life we can fulfill our aim of life for telling about ashram if time allows then i can tell you only about our culture shastras and everything in ashram what is what has been taught everything as neha been told me that Hindu life is all about positive change. You know in there. That is right. She is right. Keeping this in mind, let us try to understand what, <coughs> why, why this is positive, why our culture is positive. And still we don't know about our culture. That is the main Pity for us. It's not good for us. We don't know much about our culture. <laughs> Vedas are all positive thoughts. We know it from Vedas. We have forgotten our Vedas. We have forgotten our culture. And we have adopted the life like an animal. You might not like this word. This word. But it is seems like that. Because there is no aim in the life. I have seen the people, no aim in the life. And it's the same as the animal. Animal has got no aim. And they just comes and goes like that. We comes and go. What is the aim of our life? We are not better than animal. Don't you think we are better than animal? We have got intelligence, which animal don't have. So we have got thinking power. So we must think properly. Our Vedas, which is the ultimate root of our dharma, it's even roots of all other dharms as well. All other dharms as well. Because <laughs> there is sutra in down there. Vedas, Kilo dharma mulam. That means Ved is the root of all the dharma, all dharmas. To discuss about all these things at present, I don't think time is allowed us. Time has changed, our culture is changed. That is pity for us that we don't know our Vedic way of life or about our own true culture of Gurukuls, Vidyalai, Kanya Vidyalai. We had lots of Gurukuls in India. You must be knowing before these Mughals started coming in India. They have destroyed so many, our culture, most of our culture was destroyed at that time. But now is this starting as well, starting for that. Gurukuls are starting, Kanya Vidyalai are starting. Kanya Gurukul is starting. According to, according to Vedas, our lives are divided in four parts as ashram. You must be knowing about ashram. What is ashram? <laughs> according to Vedas, four life. Four parts in our life. First part, from childhood until we are at education, complete our education. That is Brahmachari ashram. That is called Brahmacharya Ashram. Until I say about 25, 30 years of age, when, when people learn 
learning age. Then comes Grosta Ashram. After learning, we settled and have a married life. That is called Grosta Ashram. Try to remember Ashram in every part. Brahmacharya Ashram, Grosta Ashram, and the third one is Van Prastha Ashram. And that is, I have took the Van Prastha Ashram as well. Third, third stage of our life is Van Prastha. And the last is Sanyas Ashram. Sanyas Ashram, Van Prastha Ashram. Why Shram there? Ashram means you have to do Shram. Work hard. Our life is to work hard. Not easy, easy going our life. We have to work hard, then we get successful in life. Otherwise not. Otherwise we are just like animal. So we have to work hard, hard for our life. <laughs> you have heard ashram in all four parts. Ashram means all four. So we have to work hard. Now, which is the aim of our life? What is the main aim of our life? I have not told so far. Aim of our, of our life is to get rid of all the sorrows. To get rid of all the miseries. And to get rid of all the trouble comes in our life. How can we achieve it? We can at least can know about these things if you start learning our Shastras. Otherwise, we can't know about these things. <laughs> and that is called salvation. We got aim of life, which is salvation, complete peace, happiness, no sorrow. And a very, very long time we can enjoy our life without any sorrow, any pain, and nothing. <laughs> so for that, I can say you a little bit about these things as well. Our earth, earth's life. Do you know what is the earth life is? Earth life. I think I had written somewhere. About 2 billion years since it happened, Earth. And 2 billion years is to go to finish all, the, all this Earth life. But when we get salvation, we have got 36 times of this 4 billion. 4 billion of uh, Earth life and four billions of uh, earth silent time. So it will be eight multiplied by 36. Eight billion multiplied by 36,000. It's not only 36, 36,000. And that comes, that comes no the one so we we have got these things of a uh, salvation for thirty one thirty one nil ten karva and forty arab abaj I, I I can understand this in Hindi but I can't tell you in English at that present time. So you have to calculate. That's why I told you eight times multiplied by 36,000 times is the longest time we get to full, to enjoy our life. Why? Because at that time, we have got no birth and not to die, just enjoyment. And this is the system given us by Ishwar, God, in Vedas as well. So, whom we trust? Children trust their parents when they are small. 
They trust their parent. But whom we trust, whom we can trust, we can trust our Sanatan Dharma, Sanatan Vedic Dharma. If it is pure, if it is written by God, it is given the knowledge by God. And that is, Vedas are the knowledge given by God. In the start of the universe, every, every time, start of the universe, God gives us this knowledge. And we must know this. We are so lucky that we have got these things at the moment with us. <laughs> so we must have Vedic life or Sanatan life. And we must live like that to get peace and harmony in our life and know the real meaning of our culture. You must not, you must be knowing about these Vedas is our initial true Sanatan Dharma, which I have already told you now, so it's all right. Because I told you now, because why we are forgotten about this, how many years ago? About 3,000, 4,000 years, we have forgotten all about Vedas. During that time, during that time, all the others, all the other things came in and we have adopted that things which is not in Vedas. And we are still living that things because we are used to it. But we must, if you wanted to know our true, true, true Sanatan Dharma, then you must know about Vedas. <laughs> No. Is it nearly time for your question answer? I don't know. One thing is, I like to ask you now. Do you know Swami Dayanand Saraswati Ji? If anybody knows, might be. And the book he has wrote, Satyarth Prakash. And Satyarth Prakash is the summary of Vedas. Summary of Vedas. Those who wanted to know the summary, what is in the Vedas, I have got the book. Ushabin might have got the book as well. The Light of Truth. Sorry, it must be wrong way around. The Light of Truth. So if you have got time, patient, then you can start reading. It's very good. You lots of knowledge in it. It's I said that it is, it's the Sarans, Saransvi, as we call, of Vedas. <laughs> and who is this Dayanand? About 175 years ago, Swami Dayanand, Saraswati Ji, was born in Tankara in Gujarat, in Morbi Rajya. He wanted to know about true God, and he had suffered a lot for finding out these things. And he found out at the end, Vedas, our true knowledge, our true Sanatan Dharma. And still until then, we don't know him. Because I tell you about these things that because we can read Vedas, because we are at education, because we go in university at this time, is our grandmother and grand, uh, grand, great grand has gone in school? No. At that time, nobody was allowed girls to go to school. Because between this time, two, three to four thousand years ago, all our system was destroyed. All our system was destroyed. And the, the one who was down there, they don't want women to come out. They don't want women to educate. They don't want women to lead. 
They wanted only man to lead, not woman. That is where we were illiterate. We don't know about learning our great grandfather and great grand, uh, uh, not grandfather, father, grandfather was learning a little bit, but not grandmother. They don't allow grandmother to learn. So he started first school in India for girls. Because of his help, we can learn now. And we are the th people like that, we have forget him. We have forget all about him. That is not good. <laughs> now you can ask me any question if you want, because you've got about 20 minutes still left. If you want to know, otherwise I will carry on and on. Yeah. I'll, I'll start there, Ben. Um, I think it's very important of what you said about the mindset, how we tune our mind and how we prepare ourselves. Now, there is a very interesting research, which is recently done um, in US, I believe, but uh, this, they also found the similar sets that Asian women who are um, in the family system and who are well prepared within the families. So they actually had easy transition in menopause. Then the isolated families and the women who were not really had an interaction with the tradition and cultures. So there has been a lot of research nowadays which goes around to say how much we are rooted in our tradition and cultures because those roots actually prepare us for the forthcoming changes, whether good or bad or how, good. how difficult it is, but our roots prepare us. Now, I never knew when my grandmother or my mother actually had these stages because as you said, never shared, they never shared. <laughs> but if I have to go through, I think I would wonder and I would cry for help because I'm not prepared. So it is very important, as you said, that accept and prepare with our traditions and with our roots and our cultures, because that stabilizes us. But my question uh, is, is, I agree, but as you said, ashram system, you join ashram. So for instance, um, I, I'm, I'm still committed and I'm still have work. I still, my children are not grown. So if in any circumstances, when we cannot leave um, and go and live in ashram. Is there any way while carrying in this world and in my home, I can still follow the rules of ashram and transit in the later stages of Vanaprastha? Well, uh, in halfway you can do it because in halfway you are in sansar. So you can prepare your mind for that. So of course you can prepare your mind. Yeah. So, so for that, you must know more and more about our culture. True culture, not false one. Because we have got so many false things going around. I mean, Ansruddha. There are so many Ansruddha going around. And there is several reasons for that as well, which we can't discuss now. But uh, there are. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned the true culture, because that's with the name of the culture, there is a lot of malpractices. And I don't believe that that is our culture, what has taught us. So, um, sorry, I, I took on. Anybody may have any questions for Jayaben or want some more clarity or specification, please feel plenty free. Plenty of time. We've got still yeah. plenty of time. 15 mm -hmm. minutes we've got. Yeah, I have one question. Uh, yes. it's, uh, it's also about the ashrams, like even though after we can go to ashram, but our mind is still in the our sansar. I don't think so about yes. going to work. What can you do about but that? I, 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 won't, I won't tell you, I won't tell you to come suddenly down there. Come mm -hmm. there for a few days, see it, come often after another year as well. Stay about, first you can stay about a week, then the second time when you come, you can stay about a month as well if you like. And then you start learning a little bit. 
and so your things comes out. Inside things comes out, true. Your true intellect comes out. And then you liked it. Because we haven't got time in this busy life. We can't think of going away from our home mm. because we are so much attached. And our culture teach us to leave our attachment. That is the main thing. Mm. We have to leave attachment of children. We have to leave attachment of our house. We have to leave attachment of our laser life. Everything. So so even to get something, you know, to get something better, we have to live something as well. Hmm. So, so when we go to ashram, do we have to yeah. know anything in particular, or you can just go and visit the ashram and stay there? Just come and stay there for a week. Okay. First, there it has uh, to be one be... ashram only, or you can go anywhere. Is there any other? Anywhere you like. One? Any any ashram. But ashram should be Vaidik ashram. Oh, how can you trust people? How do you know? That is how the main you... thing. That is the main thing. You cannot trust the people nowadays. I have seen so many ashram before I started. I've heard about, I have read about. <laughs> this is the ashram. Because why I end up to this is that by Acharya Gyaneshwarji, who used to come every year, to preach us, to give a pravachan. I have heard so many pravachan in my life until I was before 65 years. I, every time I go to mandir and listen to whoever Vidwan has come down there, I have heard so many, but I was never satisfied with everything. But when I heard his first pravachan, first lecture, it struck me. Mm -hmm. That is what I wanted, I said. That is the type of life I wanted. Okay, one more question. If you can't answer, don't answer. This is kind of personal. So do you think you meant to be meet that person to go to the ashram and learn all this stuff? Is it like it may be in our, uh, I don't know how to say it, but meant to be meet when you meant to be Yeah. Is oh, it no, our product? No, no. Not like that. He invited us from many, many people in uh, many people. Only I gave, I go there because I was in a state to go there. I, I don't go for uh, living there. I wanted to see how it works, how the ashram is uh, uh, activities down there. And first time when I go, I just go for two, three hours, two, three hours only mm. first time. Then second time I go for a day. And then third time when I go, I went for a week because they invited me for a, a, a um, occasion. Om, there was some occasion down there. It's a I shibir think, type thing. I think Om Upasak Sammelan, Jabin. Ah, Om Upasak Sammelan, ha. Huh? This is the first time when uh, they told me to speak and they, oh, on the stage. No experience. I said, how can I speak? <laughs> and Acharya says, don't, doesn't matter. Don't, don't worry about anything. Say anything you like. Yeah, come with the... <laughs> and I can, I can, I can, I can say that from that day, I got confidence to speak. Otherwise, I have no confidence at all. What did you say that first time when you go up in the stage? That, that on the stage, he said about this here in England, about oh. my, how we live in England. <laughs> because oh. I have got no other knowledge. That is it. That <laughs> so, yeah, personal experience is always good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Thank so, you. That is the thing. I think Induji wants to ask something. Yeah. And you know, he was so nice. Actually, he welcomed me there in ashram and gave me all the special facilities to get me settled down there as well. 
I wasn't full. I got brain as well. So I have to think about all these things. Then I accept all these things. Otherwise, I don't accept it, these things. <laughs> and he yeah, has died now. He's not here. here anywhere. He's not here anywhere. Mm. Now I am there for so many years. And those who want to see ashram, I can show you all around and going all the uh, activities as well, going around and and see the Brahmacharis Gurukul Ashram. There's Brahmacharis Gurukul Ashram as well down there. Kanya Gurukul Ashram is there, down there as well. There's Gaushala as well, big, about 100 cows. There are so many things. Jaben. Uh, the one lady, Indu Ben Popat, has some questions. So she's, okay. uh, she's going to ask. Okay. What, what is there, Indu Ben? Um, Usha Ben, Namaste, Baddhan, and Namaste. Um, all I wanted to say, it, because of Jaya Ben, I went to Dashram, and there was a Shibir for 10 days. So the first time I went with Jaya Ben, there was a Shibir. And I learned a lot from the morning onwards. There is uh, rules and regulation you have to follow in the ashram. And it's, not, it's a very simple life, uh, extremely simple life. You are given a little cupboard to put your clothes in. You got um, ordinary bed. Um, there are no um, luxuries of any kind. It's very simplified life. I really enjoyed it. But I also discovered that India's life doesn't suit me. I become ill every time I go to India. <laughs> so the thing is that you have to find out whether it suits your health. Mentally, it's a very good place to be in. Spiritually, mentally, health-wise, everywhere. It's just the food didn't agree with me. And uh, if you live in an ashram, um, you have to learn to adapt. And because I was there only for a little while, I didn't um, gather together things whereby I can cater for my own self. So I was eating where, where there was a communal kitchen for everyone to eat. And that food did not agree with my system. But the whole ashram is wonderful. The teachers are excellent and you learn a lot. I've learned a lot from them. I've done four visits so far and I've been invited to go again. So I'm hoping one of these days I'll go again to spend some time. But it's worth an experience, even if you go for a few days, because I took a friend with me and she stayed two nights. But she decided she only got one daughter and she didn't want to live there. <laughs> so she decided not to stay either. But she really enjoyed her visit as well. So please do visit the Vedic Ashram. It's the purest place. You will not feel threatened in any way. Everyone looks after you. And people do cater for your spiritual needs. That's all I have to say. Dhaniyavad for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Indubin. you, Indubin. Thank you. That's that's very insightful. Um, and as always, just to add on, yes, when we go from any um, different environment climate, there is always time for body to adjust. So it's not very uncommon. Most of us when we go from UK or US to India, uh, there's always we most of us always fall sick until unless we are a frequent flyers. So there is always a suggestion on the medical uh, and you can always ask the GP as well, taking your own water bottle to taking your own food, not to eat raw, but always have a cooked one, not spicy. So these are the some general clinical guidelines always given by the doctors when you're traveling abroad. So I think body adjust in a little while but as Jayaben said, anyway, this is not uh, that you have to have a transit quick. So this is very helpful in the event for sharing that, you know, with a short a little interval to until we are ready. But there is a, it's not that we go to ashram as a special effort. 
every year we go for vacation. So now I think this is a time stage where it's worth making a trip rather than vacation, going to the ashram and seeing how we adapt to the new transition. So uh, it's nothing very unusual visiting ashram because we anyway plan to visit holidays, going to countries, family trips. So now it's time that we start to making a trip for ourselves taking time out for oneself and spending this time in the ashram is literally spending time with your own self. And if you can do that, this is the one of the first stages of this transition because this is this ashram is all about you. As Jayabhan said, the very first ashram Brahmacharya is all about learning, growing and getting skilled. The next one is all about your family and society. But this is the third ashram where it is all about you, your growth, your development, and what all you couldn't do it in the family life because of the time restrainings, because of the commitments, this is the time you will be doing. But if we are not comfortable with our own self, we won't be listening to ourselves or developing ourselves. So it's very worth that taking this short intervals rather than family trips. Now it's a trip for myself. And how do I want to spend my time? So that is in the solitary. That is listening. You are always welcome. <laughs> always welcome. Yes, yes. We have got hospitals down there. Yes. We've got Ayurvedic hospital as well. Allopathy, homeopathy, everything is there of the ashram. Yes, yes. So you, you I, I am planning my... Of, I, I'm planning my transition. It's not very soon, but hopefully whenever. But I'm planning in a way that, I, as Jayabin said, the ashram is usually a full-fledged running, a functional, uh, where it accommodates everybody. So when my children, they can go to the Brahmacharya and I might be going to the Van Press, but then we both have to have this exploration. It doesn't have to be solitary or alone, but of course, each of us has a new learning from somewhere. So make it a way to find uh, whether you can visit or if you can't visit, Jaya Ben is right here. So who all are blessed. I, I'll help you in knowledge. everywhere. Yes, yes. If you just let me know here. beforehand. Whenever she's here taking the best time of her and understanding to preparing for this transition. Um, any questions, any concerns, please feel free. Um, all in the chat box, Usha Ben has written about the details on the ashram and the book Jaya Ben just mentioned. So if you would like to take these details down or you want us to share it uh, separately, please don't hesitate. So what um, is three books to just give, give away? Just as a gift, I mean, if anybody comes and collect from me or uh, I can left live from some for Shabin as well. Yes. If anybody wants. It's about Vedas and things and about this then Sarshati as well. Yes. One thing so, to mention, I know there is one small have... book. Yes. One small, what, just a minute. Just one small book with our everyday prayers which I have written and I have made it printed as well. So this is free as well for that. If you got some trouble in life, this is, but oh, sorry, I have got a, a, a Gujarati's book. This is called Samasya Samadhan. Whatever Samasya you have got, you can solve your Samasya from this. And this is the, from Hindi to Gujarati, I have translation. I have done the translation. So I've got so many books like that. There is one book down there, and one book down there. And you, one book is this Dranna Jwade, which means we can, you know, we get rid of our, our um, ignorance, how we can get rid of our ignorance, Andhasraddha and things like that. There is one book down there is that there are 500 questions arising from your mind to know about the Vedas. There are so many things. Only small book, 500 questions of our true knowledge of our culture. So those who are interested. 500 questions. What is, what is the kind of question in that? About, about, about us. 
about soul, Example. about Ishwar, hmm. about nature. All this it can include everything thing, and it knows it, it tell us what is Vedas. Very good book, uh, Ursha Ben. Mm -hmm. uh, 500 question about life. What is Ishwar? What's our karma? What's his karma? Vyavastha? Um, what's Yagna? It's so many simple questions. The question, very simple question and very simple answer in two, three lines, which you understand. And there is a further question after that, like link it, 20, 10, 12 question for the one like link in answer and question. So, you know, one question, somebody answer and then other question arise in mind. So there mm. is a further 10 question according to the first question. It's That's really it. good book. I've read it and I got yeah. it. And exactly like you said, while yeah. you are answering my question, I have another extra 10 question. So I can yeah, keep asking true. and I can true, keep true. moving. Never mind. Never mind. It true. is your time. <laughs> And uh, anybody interested to have this book, Jabin mentioned, mm. uh, I don't mind giving my address. You can collect from my house. Mm. Uh, and uh, about the light of truth, I have a Hindi and English version. So, and that- no, uh, Gujarati Satya, version? Satya Prakash book is uh, a well. quite thick book. So probably you can buy that one, mm. uh, but other books are free. Um, I don't know how many Paravidya copy, but uh, so I'll, I'll my, my, my phone number, I left it on the chat box. So if you're interested in any of this book or any more um, question in your mind about the talk and uh, recording or so anything, many. you can phone me. So we'll send you all the details. Okay. Thank you, Jabin. Thank I have you. been to this ashram. Our culture at the yeah. end of any occasion, we say Santi part as well. So let us do Santi part first. And then if you wanted to carry on, I don't mind. For Santi part, we must sit straight with our back straight as well. We can keep our eyes loosely closed or you can keep it open, doesn't matter. And be within, not out. Om Dyo Shanti Antarikshagun Shanti Prithavi Shanti Rapa Shanti Roshadaya Shanti Vanaspataya Shanti Vishwe Deva Shanti Brahma Shanti Sarvam Shanti Shanti Reva Shanti Sama Shanti Redi Om Shanti 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 Sapko Sadar Namaste Ek